A few years ago, I had a go at casting this Viking-inspired axe from scrap metal using castable wax, and my carving skills weren't all that good, but it was a fun project. Of course, these days I have 3D printers, and rather than melting metal just to make a decorative piece, I thought I may as well print one. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, printing armor and weapons for cosplay, LARPing or just decoration is nothing new, but it's not something that I've ever had a go at doing. So I started off by using ZBrush to make something that I hope a Viking from the Middle Ages would recognize as a fairly typical axe head. The dragon and Celtic knot patterning is a little bit of a liberty, certainly not really a traditional Viking style, but hopefully Viking-ish. The handle seems quite long by our standards at roughly two foot in length, but this was quite typical for the era apparently, and some handles were even longer. I strive to design with printing in mind, so right from the off I was thinking about witness marks and location studs to make assembly easier. For me, this will be an FDM project, though it could certainly be done on any mid-range resin printer. If you want to make this project yourself, these print files are available for free right now, so follow the links in the description. With FDM, you don't want to print this axe head flat on the bed, as this can cause stepping, which is ridges that spoil the face of the print. You can print vertically, of course, which gives the benefit of a smoother finish. But thanks to the engraved pattern, there's a lot of overhangs that could lead to printing issues. So I tilted the head at 30 degrees, blocked any supports from spoiling the front face, and made sure there were plenty of supports to hold the axe head in place whilst it was printing. Personally, I used the Eligu Centauri Carbon along with Sunlu PLA Plus, and together I think they've done a great job. This design comes with a pattern side and a plain side, and I wanted both sides of my axe to have a pattern, so I cloned and mirrored the appropriate section to give me the desired result. There's these little pegs that you can print and insert into the axe head, and this will help you align the pieces at the gluing stage. The handle is very easy to print. Just place everything vertically on the plate and it should come out with a nice smooth result. Certainly no need for supports with FDM. You might notice that there's a hole running through the handle and that's to add an optional dowel for strength. If your print is purely going to be a wall hanger, then you probably won't need one of these dowels but otherwise you'll want a six millimeter or quarter inch wooden dowel or metal rod that's approximately 600 millimeters long. One thing I will say about this project is if you don't love sanding, then this project isn't for you. I'm using 240 grit paper initially and a sanding block. The design is largely flat, so a block is ideal. You don't need to sand the inside sections but a file helps remove any burrs. Rough sanding starts to reveal more flaws and shows where lots of filling is needed, but filling around this detail sounded a tricky idea to me. So I decided to paint the axe head with fiberglass resin. Now this is stinky stuff, so I'm working outside. But fortunately, it's pretty easy stuff to use. Just mix the recommended proportions and paint on quickly. I'm trying to make sure that I get resin inside these recessed sections, but I don't want to let it puddle anywhere. It will dry hard in just a few minutes, and it does feel as though you're painting with treacle. So here I'm covering the surface evenly and stippling to ensure there's no puddles. This will be touched dry in about 20 minutes, but I'll leave it 24 hours before doing anything else. Here they are looking super shiny and not that much smoother, but the surface is now nice and hard and those ridges caused by the printing process are largely filled, but there's still plenty of sanding to do. I started with 120 grit paper, moved on to 240, 
and here I'll be using 320. I'm using a quality dust mask and I recommend you do the same. This is filler primer, which helps hide imperfections. I'll add three even coats before sanding again. Things aren't looking too bad, but there are a few imperfections that need a little filler. And I'll talk more about the filler in a moment. I'm using 600 grit paper at this stage and things are looking a lot smoother. Now's the time to join the two axe head sections. There's no need to glue these pins as there will be plenty of other addition. I previously mentioned filler and throughout this project I actually used car body filler, which is amazing stuff. In fact, I use this as glue as it grabs brilliantly and fills at the same time, but it is messy, so be ready. Just push the two halves together firmly and don't fuss too much. This filler will be solid in about 10 minutes, but at roughly five or six minutes, it's firm enough to trim away. And this is a really useful thing to do as it cleans things up and saves hours of unnecessary sanding. Here are the two halves bonded together perfectly, but the areas around the seam will need more filling and sanding to hide the join. I covered these recessed sections in tape just to make life a little easier. Now I'm sanding with 800 grit paper, which clogs very quickly, so using water helps excessive clogging and reduces paper use. I've moved up to 1200 grit paper now, and I've been adding a few more coats of filler primer along the way. I think it's looking pretty good, but I'll give it a final sanding with 2000 grit paper. All the colours that you see here are the different layers of primer showing through. And here I'm adding two even coats of normal black primer, which will be followed by a coat of black gloss. The black gloss is a necessary stage before using this chrome paint. I think you'll agree, it doesn't look too bad when done. It's not the mirror finish that the paint can lid suggested, but I still think it looks a lot like metal. The problem for me is that I think that these patterns seem to disappear. So I reached for my acrylic paints, the kind that you use to paint your miniatures, and I clumsily tried adding black. For me, this was made even harder by looking through the lens of the camera as I was doing it. Moving on to the handle, just as a reminder, I've included witness marks and location studs for easy alignment. Because of the nature of FDM printers, you may need to sand the very tips of these points for better fitting. Here, I'll be joining the handle sections with car body filler, a messy but strong and practical process. You can see that I've marked the dell so that I know where each section begins and ends. A lot of this filler will ooze out, but avoid the temptation to try and clean things up at this stage. You'll just make more mess. Just ignore it for a few minutes. Once it's nearly dry, but not quite, the filler can be sliced or scraped away much more cleanly. The handle gets the same sanding, filling and priming treatment. I finished with a matte black primer and I think it looks okay, but I want to try and make a wood grain effect. This will be a mixture of Bob Ross and Slap Chop technique, but if we don't try, we don't learn, I guess. This is contrast paint, and it should let some of those colors shine through. And here it is finally glued together. I can't pretend it's perfect, but it's actually much better than I expected it would be. I will say I managed to damage the chrome finish whilst painting in the black recesses, so I guess it was still a little soft. Next time I'll leave it a good week in a warm place before I go near it. And remember, if you want to have a go at doing this, the files are available online right now. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and thanks for watching.